Unhappiness by Franz Kafka. When it was becoming unbearable once toward evening in November, and I shrank from the sight of the lit up street, then turning to the interior of the room, found a new goal in the depths of the looking glass and screamed out loud to hear only my own scream, which meant no answer, no anything that could draw its force away so that it rose up without check and could not stop even when it ceased being audible. The door in the wall was open toward me. How swiftly, because swiftness was needed and like a small ghost, a child blew in from the pitch dark corridor where the lamp was not yet lit and stood a tiptoe on a floorboard that quivered imperceptibly. At once dazzled by the twilight in my room, she made to cover her face quickly with her hands, but contented herself unexpectedly with a glance at the window, where the mounting vapor of the street lighting had at last settled under its cover of darkness behind the crossbars. With her right elbow, she supported herself against the wall in the open doorway and let the draft from outside play along her ankles, her throat, and her temples. I gave her a brief glance, then said, good day, and took my jacket from the hood of the stove since I didn't want to stand there half undressed. I let my mouth hang open so that my agitation could find a way out. I had a bad taste in my mouth. My eyelashes were fluttering on my cheeks. This visit, though I had expected it, was the one thing needful. The child was still standing by the wall at the same spot. She had pressed her right hand against the plaster and was quite taken up with finding her cheeks all pink, that the whitewashed walls had a rough surface and chafed her fingertips. I said, are you really looking for me? Isn't there some mistake? Nothing easier than to make a mistake in this big building. I'm called so-and-so and I live on the third floor. Am I the person you want to find? Hush, hush, said the child over her shoulder. It's all right. Then come further into the room. I'd like to shut the door. I have shut it this very minute. Don't bother, just be easy in your mind. It's no bother, but there's a lot of people living on this corridor and I know them all, of course. Most of them are coming back from work now. If they hear someone talking in a room, they simply think they have the right to open the door and see what's happening. They're just like that. They've turned their backs on their daily work, and in their provisionally free evenings, they're not going to be dictated to by anyone. You know that as well as I do. Let me shut the door. Why? What's the matter with you? I don't mind if the whole house comes in. And as I told you, I've already shut the door. Do you think you're the only person who can shut doors? I've even turned the key in the lock. All right then, I couldn't ask for more. You, you didn't need to turn the key either, but now that you are here, make yourself comfortable. You're my guest. You can trust me entirely. Just make yourself at home and don't be afraid. I won't compel you to either stay or go away. Do I have to tell you that? Do you know me so little? No, you really shouldn't have told me that. I'm just a child. Why stand on so much ceremony with me? A child, of course, but not so very small. You're, you're quite big. If you were a young lady, you, you wouldn't dare lock yourself so simply in a room with me. We needn't worry about that. My knowing you so well isn't much protection to me. It only relieves you of the effort to keep up pretenses with me. And yet, you're paying me a compliment to stop it. I beg you, do stop it. I don't know you entirely, least of all in this darkness. It would be much better if you were lit up. Or perhaps not. Either way, I'll keep in mind that you've been threatening me. What? How have I threatened you? I'm pleased that you've come at last. I say at last because it's already rather late. I, I can't understand why you've come so late. But it's possible that in the joy of seeing you, I have been speaking randomly and you took my words the wrong way. But how could you think of such a thing? Why do you insist on spoiling this brief moment of your presence here? A stranger would be more obliging than you are. 
No stranger could come any closer to you than I am by nature. You know that too, so why are the pathos? If you're only wanting to stage a comedy, I'll go away immediately. What? You have the, the impudence to tell me that. You are too bold. It's my room you're in. It's my wall you're rubbing your fingers on like mad. My room, my wall. And what you're saying is ridiculous as well as impudent. You say your nature forces you to speak to me like that. Is that so? Your nature forces you? This kind of your nature. Your nature is mine. And if I feel friendly to you by nature, then you mustn't be anything else. Is that friendly? I I'm speaking of earlier on. Do you know how I'll be later on? I don't know anything. I went to the bed table and lit the candle on it. At the time, I had neither gas nor electric light in my room. And then I sat for a while at the table until I got tired of it. I put on my greatcoat, took my hat from the sofa, and blew out the candle. As I went out, I tripped over the leg of a chair. On the stairs, I, I met one of the tenants from my floor. Going out again already, you rascal, he asked, pausing with his legs firmly straddled over two steps. Oh, what can I do? I I've just had a ghost in my room. You say that exactly as if you had just found a hair in your soup. You're making a joke of it, but let me tell you, a ghost is a ghost. How true. Uh, but what if one doesn't believe in ghosts at all? Well, do you think I believe in ghosts? But how can my not believing help me? Quite simply, you don't need to feel afraid if a ghost actually turns up. Oh, that's only a secondary fear. The real fear is a fear of what caused the apparition. And that fear doesn't go away. I have it fairly powerfully inside me now. Out of sheer nervousness, I began to hunt through all my pockets. But uh, since you weren't afraid of the ghost itself, you could have easily asked it how it came to be there. Obviously, you've never spoken to a ghost. One never gets straight information from them. It's just a hither and thither. These ghosts seem to be more dubious about their existence than we are. And no wonder, considering how frail they are. But I've heard that one can fatten them up. How well informed you are. But even then, it's not worthwhile. My neighbor was already so far up the stairs that he had to bend over the stairwell to see me. All the same, if you steal my ghost from me, all is over between us forever. I was only joking. Well, that's all right then. And now, I really could have gone quietly for a walk. But because I was so forlorn, I preferred to go upstairs again. And so, I went to bed.